Senator Thune. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, let me just start by saying that spectrum decisions uh, are often driven by the amount of proceeds that a particular bill might raise rather than policy, which is, uh, concerns me. Uh, when I authored Mobile Now and in working with uh, Ranking Member Cruz on this Spectrum Pipeline Act of 2024, uh, I've always focused on getting the policy right, not on how much money the bill would raise. And so I would just ask each of the panelists, and be simple yes or no, uh, should Spectrum policy be driven by the dollar signs certain legislation could raise? Dr. Ghosh. No, it should be for the user uh, capabilities. No. Yeah. No for security. Right. No. No, all the receipts should go to the U.S. Treasury. So, um, Mr. Fergot Roth, could you elaborate on the specific harms that uh, allowing spending priorities to, to dictate spectrum policy? Uh, yes, Senator. Um, the important thing about spectrum policy that we've been discussing today is to get spectrum from the federal government to the private sector or to protect spectrum that's in the federal user. Uh, but the auctions are all about getting uh, spectrum to commercial users as quickly and expeditiously as possible. Uh, and uh, spectrum policy shouldn't be focused on how much we can get to some specific activity. Uh, I, I think Congress does that through the Appropriations Committee. Um, and uh, that, uh, that, that should be the way it, it operates. Uh, if you think about it, today um, we have uh, approaching a $36 trillion deficit. If you could find $100 billion a day, hundred billion dollars a day you could not pay off the federal debt in a year we, we just we just have this massive debt how are we going to close it well let me just um, that's a subject that I'm interested in but probably not for for, for um, this conversation but uh, in my view uh, the United States need to make more mid-band spectrum available both for commercial licensed and unlicensed uses to maintain our global competitiveness. It's clear to me that the Biden administration is not taking our mid-band spectrum deficit seriously while China and our rivals are freeing up this crucial spectrum. The president's national spectrum strategy commits to freeing up zero megahertz of spectrum, not a single megahertz. Uh, Mr. Fergot Roth, is there any urgency that you see from this administration to make more spectrum available for commercial use? And then just as a follow-up to that, how important is it then for Congress to act and provide a real spectrum implementation plan? Uh, Senator, I think the two can work together. I think there's some positive elements in the Biden administration spectrum policy, uh, but it, it uh, the timelines are much too broad, they need to be tightened up, uh, and uh, there, there needs to be some identification of spectrum that's gonna be in the pipeline by a date certain. Uh, and that's why I think uh, that uh, the bill you've co-sponsored on the uh, Spectrum Pipeline Act of 2024 is, uh, has, uh, is an excellent bill and moves everything in the right direction. Ms. Brown, um, I was supportive of and pushed the PI FCC to make the six gigahertz band available for unlicensed use. This order fulfilled an important mandate of the Mobile Now Act, which recognized the role both licensed and unlicensed spectrum play in the communications landscape. During the most recent World uh, Radio Communications Conferences, it was reported that China and Huawei were working against the United States to reverse the progress made on six gigahertz. Could you elaborate on how this played out and how moving forward or I should say, and moving forward, what steps uh, should the United States take to ensure we're leading the world in wireless advancements? Well, thank you, and thank you for all your support of Unlicensed through the years, including uh, the most recent Spe Spectrum Pipeline Act and your discussion of advanced Wi-Fi. Um, China has been um, opposing U.S. industry efforts to open the upper six gigahertz band from the day the FCC made its decision in April 2020. We have encountered Huawei and Chinese interest in every country in every proceeding that has looked at the six gigahertz case. That culminated in November and December of this past year, WRC, where China attempted a spectrum grab. 
They tried to use the WRC decision-making process to basically tell the world, you will not use the upper part of the six gigahertz band for unlicensed. You will not even have that discussion. You will only use it for exclusive licensed mobile use. Uh, that is not what happened, thanks to US leadership at the conference. We ended up with a resolution whereby the countries of the world could decide for themselves, based on their own strategic objectives, what they wanted to do with the upper six gigahertz band. Um, and that means that uh, US industry can continue to go country by country to try to influence national regulation and come up with a harmonized approach to the six gigahertz band. Going forward, we're going to need help from the administration, and we work very closely uh, with the trade organizations within the USG to try to uh, use those levers to help us as we go around the world. Well, thank you all very much, and I would just uh, argue, uh, Madam Chair, that it's time to reload the pipeline, and, um, and I think you all have testified to that today how important that is for on so many levels. So uh, I hope we can get moving on legislation that would bring some certainty and, and clarity to the issue. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Thune. Uh, Senator Lummis. Thank you, Madam.